Have you ever thought about how brutally Julius Caesar was killed because of how terrible of a person he kind of was? Or is it just because people just didn't like him? I don't know. I don't do enough uh, research on the Roman Empire, to be fair. Uh, I just know the phrase et tu brute, or et tu brute. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't speak Latin or Roman or whatever. Anyways, hello everybody. <laughs> and that was an interesting entry and opening. But this is that manga dude, and welcome to another good old-fashioned reading log. Today, we're going to be talking about the good old-fashioned manga that I read in the month of March 2024. And yeah, it was an interesting month. It was actually a month that I read the least amount that I've read in a long time uh, for a variety of things. My I had my anniversary with my fiance. Uh, actually, family was down here. Uh, so I spent time with them for about a week. Um, so definitely read a lot less than I usually do. However, that doesn't mean that I didn't read a lot of good stuff. I actually learned a lot of interesting manga across uh, the entire month, so I'm really excited to talk about it, and uh, yeah, let us get started right now. Let's go. Okay, so our first manga that I read in March of 2024 is the good old fashioned One Piece. This is volume 105 from Ichiro Oda. This is the classic series that I highly doubt you don't know what this is, and if you don't, Wow, uh, that's pretty surprising. Anyways, um, yeah, this is the start of the next arc. We're finally getting into Egg, uh, or whatever it's called. <laughs> the Egg Island. Uh, we have some new stuff. Uh, Jinbei's officially joined the crew, uh, at least like actually is on the boat and going to a different island. Um, yeah, I'm uh, really excited to start this new arc and uh, interesting to see who the new uh, emperors are as well. It's. Uh, not necessarily surprising per se, but it is pretty funny. Um, I like the characters that they're bringing back into the story as well, so this is really cool. Uh, I really did like this volume, I think. It was a pretty good one, especially for how much I didn't really like Wano uh, in comparison, so. All right, up next, I decided to read the 15th volume of Mashal Magic and Muscles from Hajime Komoto. And yes, we are so back. Um, <laughs> I've been uh, enjoying Mashal a lot more recently. Um, if you know my story with Mashal, I really liked it at the beginning. Uh, got a little bit down on it and not really caring too much about it about halfway through the series and then has uh, picked up back for me uh, towards the end here. And yeah, it's really great. This was a really good volume as well. Um, especially because like Mash, like Mash is actually back now, finally. Um, because he's been kind of out of commission for a few volumes now and uh, yeah he's finally back and he's doing some pretty crazy stuff so really excited to see where this fight's gonna go on in volume 16 um, and really enjoyed where the fight was as we went through this volume all right up next I have to open this up but um, I read as many people know if you've seen the video I read all of Akira volumes 1 through 6 um, in like two days I think and then I did a full review on it so I mean if you want like the most in-depth review you can get out of me uh, go check this out uh, go see my opinions on it but I absolutely loved this manga I thought it was really cool I thought the art was absolutely gorgeous I think the story and the themes are really interesting uh, and thought-provoking really gets you thinking about a lot of things just in general uh, even though this is obviously a fictional story but a lot of it still rings true and it's also interesting to look back that not much has changed since the 1980s uh, because that's around the time that um, Katsuhiro Otomo wrote this story and a lot of the things that he says are um, still relevant to today which is uh, kind of terrifying and kind of sad at the same time uh, but it is important to note that people were speaking out about this kind of stuff within um, media so it's really cool to see that as well so if you want a fantastic sci-fi series I cannot suggest this series enough and if you want more about my opinions on it go check out my video on it right now. All right. Up next, I decided to read the first volume of Metalist. This is from Suru Maikata, and this is an awesome new series, uh, or new-ish, I guess, at this point, but new series in print for English. Um, I absolutely love this volume. I thought this was a really great volume. Um, if you don't know what this is, follow the story about this guy here. He's a former uh, professional ice skater who has kind of run out of luck and is not really getting any jobs, so he decides to take up a uh, ice skating coach job uh, with his former partner, uh, former duo partner in ice skating. Uh, he eventually meets this girl here uh, who looks like she has snuck into the ice skating rink and then after a short chase scene and some other information we learn more about her background and how everyone's kind of telling her she can't make it as a skater uh, and she's 
she's kind of awkward, she's kind of weird, uh, but she's really passionate about ice skating. So she, he sees her potential and is trying to push her to follow her dreams. And yeah, it's just a really good mix of great art, um, an awesome story, and some really great themes as well. I know I'm going to be saying that a lot, but that's just kind of true about a lot of stuff that I read uh, during this month. But absolutely fantastic first volume. Definitely give it a shot. And if you want my full opinions on this, you should go check out The March FBI. All right, up next, I decided to read the first volume of Otto from Amano Jaku. This is uh, one of the series, uh, once again, that I read during my uh, good old-fashioned FBI for March. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this one. Uh, kind of funny reading it as quickly as I did after Akira. I didn't even realize that they were going to be very similar, but they ended up being pretty similar, to be honest. Themes were pretty similar. Uh, kind of the art as well. Uh, obviously, this has a little bit of its own style to it as well. Um, some really great sound effects uh, just across the board. Whoever did the, uh, the, uh, the FX for the SFX for this. Uh, fantastic job. Looks amazing. I love it a lot. Um, really good first volume. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, definitely not as much as some of the other ones that I did do a uh, review for. Uh, but yeah, I did actually like this one. It's pretty cool. Alright, up next, I gotta talk about this. This is volume 5 of Insomniacs After School from Makoto Ojiro. And, um, that's about as much as I can say about it. Uh, <laughs> this volume, um, just ends with like the biggest thing ever and I'm like kind of shaking and also kind of like oh no and also kind of like yes and also like oh uh, a variety of emotions but I was like I legit screamed at like the top of my lungs my fiance had to come out and be like what the hell is going on <laughs> Um, but it was a fantastic volume. I, I love this series so much. It's so great. Um, I just love how everything is done. Everything is handled. It's done really, really well. Um, if you want an awesome coming-of-age high school rom-com, definitely give this a shot. Up next, I decided to read the sixth volume of Dark Gathering from Kenichi Kondo, and yep, the series continues to be as creepy as ever. Um, just a lot of creepy stuff, a lot of creepy elements, some very nasty looking monsters. A uh, pretty interesting story about like the house they eventually move into too, so um, yeah, really excited for the next volume coming up soon. Up next, I decided to read the 34th volume of Black Clover from Yuki Tabata. So, um, this is after the massive cliffhanger that we got in volume 33, where Asta looks like he's going to die. Um, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Um, but we get some more information about something about the, uh, the Land of the Sun, which, uh, well, I guess you just have to see what that is for yourself. But we also get some extra background for some of the other characters that we've met, including Yami. Uh, this was a really good volume. Uh, really enjoy the series. Um, and yeah, I'll continue to keep reading it. Can't wait for volume 35. Up next, I decided to read the first volume of Magi Lumiere, or Magi Lumiere, Magical Girls Incorporated from Seka Iwata and Yu Aoki. Um, yeah, another volume that I did for the FBI in March and absolutely loved it. I love this volume. This was really cool. Um, I like this kind of futuristic, uh, more technological based Magical Girl. I know uh, I've been seeing people online complain or talk about like, oh, that already exists. Well, I haven't read a lot of Magical Girl stuff. So in my world, I have, this is one of the first to do it for me. Um, so as I continue, you read and maybe eventually we'll watch those kind of animes and stuff uh, I will obviously be like oh I can see where this was inspired by but for me this was the one uh, that came first so really enjoyed this volume I thought it was really cool uh, I like the characters I like the character designs I really like the art and I think the story is gonna be pretty interesting as we continue down the line so um, yeah it's a very exciting volume can't wait to read the next one all right, up next, I decided to read two volumes of Helsing. This is volumes four and five from Kota Hirano. And uh, I was just noticing this when I had them side by side, but they are like different colors. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, one of them is like a lighter red and one of them is darker. The, uh, the darker red one is volume five. Um, I don't know if that was an accident or whatever, but it's kind of funny just to see it. But yeah, really enjoying the series. Um, <laughs> I love our boy. I uh, just spit, that's disgusting. Um, <laughs> I love our main characters. I love Helsing. I love, I don't know, it's just a really cool series and a lot of just really fun, actiony, gory scenes to say the least. But uh, really enjoying this one. I can't wait for the next one to come out soon. All right, up next, decided to read One Piece, Shokugeki no Shitanji. So this is from Yuto Sakuda, Shun Seiki, and Yuki Morisaki, who are the people who worked on Food Wars, uh, which is why the art looks so similar. But yeah, it basically tells like a variety of short stories about um, Sanji doing some cooking throughout like parts of the story in the actual story. So uh, cool to see it happen. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I liked the, the treatment that they did with Sanji. Uh, getting some more background and information about his character uh, was kind of fun and seeing it from 
a different artist's perspective was also pretty cool. So yeah, it was a nice little one shot. If you like One Piece, definitely give this a shot. All right, up next, I should read the seventh volume of Kimi ni Todoke, uh, from me to you, from Karuho Shina, and I love this series so much. These two are so adorable. I love them. Um, they're cutie patooties. Um, yeah, we finally get some more character development between these two, which is just lovely to see. Um, gotta root for them. Sawako and uh, Kazuhaya are adorbs. I can't wait till something happens. <laughs> Crossing my fingers on that one, but um, yeah, I love the character designs. I love like the chibi stuff that. Uh, Sheena does. Um, I, I don't have any of those pages saved, but oh, there's one. Uh, I just like the way that uh, they draw Sawako. It's very, very funny. It's very adorbs. Um, and yeah, just really liking this series. It makes my heart uh, ring and sing um, happy notes. So I uh, can't wait to keep reading it. I did just pick up a couple more volumes, so I'll probably be reading it soon. All right, I had to go plug in my camera because it's about to die, so hopefully it doesn't die in the middle of recording this because that would be very embarrassing. However, let's go. So next we have ourselves Blade of the Moon Princess Volume 3 from Tatsuya Endo. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying the series. Uh, if you don't know, it's by the same manga, Spy Family and Tista. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty solid. Um, I'm not like super sold on most of these characters. Uh, I do think the action is still pretty fun. There are some funny moments throughout, uh, here and there. But in general, I'm not like the biggest fan of this series. Series. It's pretty cool, but like not amazing. So if you want like a stock standard um, shonen action battle series uh, by the same artist as Spy Family, go go give us a shot. Up next, I decided to read the first volume of The Girl with the Sampaku Eyes from Shinsuke Sorato. So this one's pretty cool. Um, uh, so it's a manga about this girl who has uh, Sampaku Eyes, which is kind of like this. Um, I don't know how to explain it. She kind of has like a kind of like a mean looking face on her uh, in a way, or at least I, I don't know. Someone who knows what that means could probably say it better, but basically she has RBF, resting B face um, in a way, uh, but she's actually really kind and really pure um, and she's totally in love and down bad for this one guy, uh, but she can't admit it. So <laughs> it's kind of a cute series. Um, it's in full color, which is really cool. Uh, and the art's great, and I don't know, they're just really adorable, like the characters are really fun, and um, yeah, I've just been a big fan of these rom-coms recently, so I've been really enjoying it, can't wait to get the next couple of volumes. Alright, up next, I decided to read the 12th volume of Kubo One Them, BB Invisible from Nene Yukimori, and big spoilers, big spoilers, um, yes, we did it, we finally did it, it only took 12 volumes, but we finally did it, I'm so happy for them, they are so cute. Um, I love these characters. I've been talking about this series for a long time. It was one of the ones, uh, one of the first volumes uh, that I think I read for the channel, uh, at least volume one. And then I talked about how I didn't like it that much and um, how it actually became my most improved series of 2022. And yeah, uh, I like it. It stuck the landing. It's a good ending for this uh, this rom com here. Uh, very adorable, very cute. Uh, if you want something that's a little bit more pure, nothing super like raunchy or super uh, dramatic, this is great. Uh, I think this one's a lot of fun. Um, and the characters are awesome. So just give it a shot if you like that kind of stuff. Alright, up next, I <laughs> decided to read Minami's Lover from Shugiko Uchida. Um, this is for mature audiences, this is very true. And um, this was a weird one. I, I gotta lie, I'm not gonna lie, this was a very strange manga. Um, follows the story about this guy named Minami, uh, whose girlfriend, um, or is it the other way around? Hold up. <laughs> Yes, okay, so Minami is the boyfriend, and his girlfriend, who's this girl here, has been shrunken down to basically, like, um, small size, uh, about the size of, like, his hand, uh, in a way, and it's very strange, it's very weird, um, it's, uh, just an odd, odd manga, because it's, like, she doesn't want to become big again, um, but he kind of misses, like, the loving touch of her when she was, you know, uh, normal size. So it's uh, very, uh, it can be pretty raunchy at times. Um, and I think it ends in like the weirdest way possible to be fair. Um, but I kind of like it. I think it's cool. I think it's interesting to read this kind of stuff. Uh, like it's more of like alternative kind of manga. Um, the art's pretty solid as well. If you like an old school style, definitely give this a shot. Uh, but please note, yeah, that there is a lot of explicit um, stuff in this. So just keep that in mind before you pick it up. All right, up next, it's say to read the big muscly man, muscly men, man, man. <laughs> this is Fist of the North Star from Budonsen and Tetsuro Hara. And uh, yeah, this follows the story of our boy Ken Shiro here, um, who's, yeah, living in this world that's a post-apocalyptic, feels very Mad Max, um, either inspired by Mad Max or Mad Max inspired 
was inspired by it. Can't really tell, don't really know. Um, but definitely one of them inspired the other for sure because like this is like very old school, very big muscly dudes, um, very much post-apocalyptic world uh, full of like rival gangs doing random things. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. I, I don't know what I was expecting when I read this, but it was pretty cool. Honestly, I, I think uh, it still holds up pretty well. Um, the art's really solid across the board and the story is not necessarily the most interesting thing in the world, but it gets the job done. So um, yeah, we'll definitely be picking up the next couple volumes when I decide to pick it up. All right, up next, decided to read Aria the Masterpiece from uh, Kozue Amano. This is the first volume, and this was amazing. This was actually really lovely, and I actually compared it to Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. Um, not necessarily because it's like uh, post-apocalyptic or anything. I guess it kind of is, but uh, basically follows this girl here uh, who's trying to become a basically like a ferryman uh, on Mars uh, after she moves there. And uh, yeah, it's really calm. It's very serene, but like you could kind of tell there's like something going on outside of this world um the art is absolutely gorgeous there's some really beautiful moments just across the board that i don't really want to spoil but it's very lighthearted, um and it just kind of feels like we're exploring these characters as lives uh and like watching them i don't know enjoy themselves and kind of like experience the world around them which is what i feel like a yokohama kaidashi kiko has uh same kind of vibe um but yeah absolutely loved it i'm really really excited to keep reading this series and i love the first volume it was awesome all right, up next, excited to read the final volume of Alice in Borderland from Haru Aso. This is volume nine, and we are officially done with this series, and it is kind of bittersweet. Um, I, I like the ending. I think it's kind of interesting, um, and I have a lot of questions still about what exactly Borderland is supposed to be, um, but very much enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. Um, the art's really good. It question, has you questioning a lot about your morals, your ethics, and a variety of other things, but um, really good volume. Um, happy that it ended this way. Uh, I'm not necessarily wanting more, which is, I think, um, uh, it depends on how you see that, but I find that to be a good thing in this experience. Um, it didn't overstay its welcome, which is always really nice. So good, good final volume, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, can't wait to keep reading more Haro Aso works. All right, up next, I decided to read Adult's Picture Book, uh, Volume 1. This is the new edition from Kei Itoi. Um, yeah, this one's an interesting one. So basically, it follows a hentai manga artist, this guy right here, um, who uh, is basically given his best friend's daughter after he passes away. He leaves her with a letter, and it says, like, oh, please take care of my daughter, blah, blah, blah. So then he's like, sure, I guess. Um, <laughs> so he tries to go find a wife um, and like basically courts this woman in a very weird, strange way. And she actually says yes. Um, so it's really weird. It's kind of like a found family, kind of like a reminiscing um, and how to cope with grief and all these kinds of things. So um, it's a really well done first volume. Uh, it does tackle a lot of dark themes. So just keep that in mind if you're going to take this, uh, if you're going to go for a read. Um, the art is very cute as well. So it's a little bit uh, interesting and not necessarily jarring, but it is a fun juxtaposition. It's an interesting juxtaposition to see um, just how like intense the story and themes are while the art is very simple and kind of like light. Uh, so yeah, a uh, really good first volume and I'm very excited to read the next couple volumes. All right, up next, I decided to read Sakamoto Days. This is volume 11 from Yuto Suzuki, and this was an amazing volume. Um, absolutely awesome. This is a really good cover as well. Uh, we're getting more into, like, this basically the battle at the school, um, which is really intense. There's a lot of crazy moments. Um, <laughs> a lot of really intense moments as well, which is to be expected from Sakamoto Days. But I uh, really enjoy this volume, and I'm, I, I'm dying to read that next volume, even though I know it's going to be, like, two months. But, like, this is going to be a very painful wait. All right, up next, I decided to read A Kingdom of Quartz from Bombhand. This is volume one, and this was really cool. Um, I'm surprised not a lot more people have talked about it, to be honest. Um, but really awesome first volume follows a story about like this world um, where angels are basically living in like a different world, uh, and the demons are living in another one. Um, and this girl here, she has like black wings, which is considered to be like everyone thinks she's cursed and something's wrong with her. Uh, so they keep mentioning it, um, but she wants to become like an angel. Um, but man, it is a really, really good first volume. The art is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Like, I'm just flipping to this page. You don't even need context. Just wow, it's so beautiful. Uh, it, extraordinarily detailed. Um, and the story is actually pretty interesting, uh, to be fair. Um, so I'm really, really interested to get this next volume. I'm um, shaken, just shaken <laughs> to read the next one. It was a really good one. And uh, hopefully it comes out sooner than later. 
which I noticed I've been saying that a lot, but that's because it's true. I've been really enjoying a lot of these volumes, so hopefully these series continue to come out in a reasonable pace. But up next, of course, I already talked about it, but Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko Volume 4 from Hitoshi Ashinano. And yeah, this was a really good for uh, a really good volume. Um, we get some extra like information about some characters, and we also get to see like almost like a farewell in a way, which is kind of sad and somber, but that's kind of like what this series is. It's like there's a serene, serene calm that is going on, even while this is like a post-apocalyptic post world. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. I love the art style and I love the story so much. And this volume was fantastic. So uh, really happy to have read it. And I know this is in my fiance's collection, not my own. So um, yeah, really excited to uh, that she is picking it up for herself uh, so that I can also read it. All right, up next, I decided to read Anjin, Volume 5, from Damon Sakurai, and this one continues to be absolutely insane. Um, super intense, super crazy, um, makes you rethink a lot of things, um, and you just gotta love Hat. He's crazy. He's an, It's just an absolutely insane villain. So many awesome action like scenes and action moments. Uh, absolutely intense, gets you sweating um, <laughs> very uncomfortably, but really, really enjoying the series, and I, man, I'm, I'm kind of sad that I missed out on reading this when it was releasing, but I'm so glad that I'm reading it now so I'm able to understand what everyone was talking about at the time. So um, yeah, gonna continue reading this. Absolutely love it, it's really cool. All right, up next, I decided to read the first omnibus of a Michel D from Suichi Shigeno. I have actually already read the first five volumes of Initial D, because uh, I actually own those from Tokyo Pop. Um, but as we all know, it went through a uh, massive Thing where Tokyo Pop kind of disappeared, uh, came back, obviously they lost the license, and Kodansha picked it back up, and really no one genuinely thought that it would get republished, uh, but I think with the manga boom as well as the amount of people who were requesting it, uh, it almost felt inevitable around like 2021. <laughs> um, so thank goodness it's finally here, and uh, yeah, it's really cool to have this. Um, Blah, 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 the paper quality is fine. Um, I know people were making a big freaking deal about it on uh, Reddit, and I thought that was really silly. Um, to be fair, I'm not the biggest uh, stickler about that kind of stuff. I really don't care too much about paper quality and stuff like that, as long as it's readable, uh, and as long as it's not gonna tear if I like touch it, um, then I'm totally okay. But a lot of people were getting, or like one guy was just unbelievably mad for no reason, uh, and it was kind of weird to watch, to be fair. But um, yeah, it's a solid first volume. Uh, follows the story of Takumi, uh, who is a, a guy who works at a gas station, also is going to high school while also doing deliveries for his dad of uh, tofu um, to uh, some random like lake or whatever, like lake resort. Um, so he's basically become like this like impeccable drift uh, drift king on uh, Mount Akita, uh, but he's also like doesn't know anything about vehicles, so it's really funny. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty cool, solid series. It's very detailed. It's very. Um, there's a lot of explanations about what's actually going on, which is really cool. Um, so it actually feels more realistic, even though this is a fictional story. So a um, lot of great stuff in this. And uh, yeah, pretty solid release as well. So definitely excited to keep picking these up. All right, up next, I decided to read X-1999, Volumes 2 and 3 from Overture... I uh, almost said Overture and Sonata, from Clamp. Uh, and yeah, this one was... It's just, it's just a really cool series, and I'm really happy to be getting these in like the individual volumes. I know these are a lot harder to find, uh, but I've managed to be able to collect them because uh, somebody has just been selling them off in my local bookstores. So thank you for that, whoever that was, and I appreciate you lots. Um, but really enjoying these volumes. Uh, really like this story quite a bit, and the, or the art is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's just some beautiful stuff. <laughs> Just like kind of like a really intense story already like out straight out of the gates We have like just a bunch of information kind of thrown at you and it's a lot to remember But like it's also a lot of fun to read um, The volumes also don't feel very long like it feels like you're reading them pretty fast even though it is taking time uh, cause There are parts where they do have a lot of explanations But there's a lot of just absolute gorgeous art which is to be expected from clamp uh, I'm really excited to keep reading the series as I keep going all right, up next, I decided to read The Darwin Incident, uh, Volume 3 from Shun Umazawa, with a weirdly specific like reference to Nighthawks, <laughs> of all things, uh, which is one of my favorite painting, uh, one of my favorite paintings. Um, but yeah, um, this is uh, this is definitely a manga for 
for better or for worse. I, I don't know how to really truly feel about this. Like, I kind of love it and I kind of hate it. Um, I think it's like a little too on the nose about American stereotypes, uh, which is like not necessarily bad, but it is kind of funny to see like how Americans are um, shown, I guess, um, being extremely racist and various other things. And it's just kind of funny because it feels almost like an insert for something else. Um, but. That's its own thing. I don't know. It's a pretty interesting story, I guess, uh, and it has some pretty funny and interesting moments as well. Uh, I do like our main character. He is uh, wildin' at all times. Up next, I decided to read the eighth volume of Inu In Your Pasta, or also known as Inuyasha, from uh, Rumiko Takahashi. This is volume eight, and I finally got to the part where, according to my fiance and one of my friends, this is the part where everyone started to hate Kikyo. Uh, and I can see why. <laughs> uh, there is a moment here towards the end of this volume where she's doing some pretty bad stuff. But uh, yeah, pretty cool series. I've talked about it. And it's one of like the most, it's like a very extremely popular series. Probably one of Rumiko Takahashi's, if not her most uh, popular series. Um, and I really like it. I think it's pretty cool and i um, definitely excited to read the next volume. All right, up next, I decided to read Gunsmith Cats, Goldie vs. Misty from Kenichi Sonoda. Um, and this might be one of my favorite current uh, series that I am reading. It's not uh, a current series at all. This is from the 90s, I think, or like early 2000s. Um, another one that has a really awesome emphasis on vehicles and, and guns, actually. And it's like very educational in a way. It's kind of funny. Uh, I'm learning a lot about various weapons and stuff. And it's just like really well detailed. The art's really cool. Um, and I just really like these old school releases for myself. Um, I, I don't know, they just look really nice. Um, and I've been really enjoying the story of our boy, um, or not our boy, wow. Um, Rally and uh, Minnie Mae. Uh, they're just really great main characters. I like them a lot. So really excited to keep reading this series. I do have it all now, so I will be reading it um, probably soon and slowly but surely, to be fair. Ooh, excuse me. Decided to read the sixth volume of Uzutoki Rhetoric from Ritsu Miyako, and this one is quite interesting. This, um, at least this volume is quite interesting. Um, we get some very interesting information about a character who has recently shown up, I believe, in volume five, uh, and he shows up again here in volume six uh, and says something towards the end of this volume that was like, "Whoa, wait a minute, that's that's kind of wild." Kind of flipped everything upside down, but. Um, very fantastic volume, really awesome mystery series. If you haven't checked it out and you like mystery stuff, definitely give it a shot. This is a really cool series. All right, up next, decided to read the third volume of Excel Saga from Rikito Koshi. Um, and yeah, this one is just strange and weird and kind of funny. Uh, I do think that there is a lot of talking and sometimes it gets a little bit bloated in terms of how much they're speaking um, But it is pretty funny. I think there are a lot of funny moments the gags even though they're repetitive are still very funny I'm still laughing <laughs> Even if it is like the same gag over and over and over again, but um, uh, yeah uh, it's a, I don't know. It's just kind of a silly series kind of feels like sergeant frog if it was like more adult Which is funny because sergeant frog already kind of feels um, adult slash teen oriented, but yeah, this feels like kind of the same way though. Uh, so like aliens are trying to take over the world, but are very bad at it. So, um, yeah, another good volume. Can't wait to keep reading it. All right, decided to read third volume of Gacha Gacha from Hiroyuki Tamakoshi. Um, yeah, this one is just continues to be a very strange series. We meet some new characters um, that are in our main girl's brain, which is kind of funny. Um, and it's just a really weird manga. Um, I've talked about it recently, so if you haven't heard about it, but Gacha Gacha is this uh, teen rom-com. follows a story about this guy who's totally down bad for this girl. Um, and then this girl goes off to Hawaii and comes back. And she seems a little bit different. Um, and his friend is trying to convince him that, oh, when someone goes to Hawaii, it's, uh, everything changes. So uh, he comes to find out that her brain has basically been altered where she switches into these different egos, like a gotcha machine. Um, and yeah, it's about him living with this situation and trying to help her as much as he can. So it's weird. It's stupid. It's kind of like um, a classic, uh, not really etchy, but just, just before that kind of manga. So... It's kind of silly and it's kind of fun, so yeah, um, I've been enjoying it and we'll continue to read it. Alright, up next, I to pick up the, or started to read the third volume of the Apothecary Diaries from Natsuhi Yuga, Neko Kurage, Itsuki, Nanao, and to Touko Shino. Wow, that's a lot of people. <laughs> um, this story is awesome, it continues to be amazing. There's a lot, some pretty interesting stuff about who 
um, who poisoned the water or poisoned the drink, uh, the food, whatever you want to call it, at the big party. Um, and yeah, we get to meet some of the people of her past as well. So we get to meet, I believe it's her, either her grandpa or her father. So it's really cool to meet some of the people that like she used to live with. Uh, and just really enjoying the series quite a bit. Um, yeah, it's uh, very intriguing, <laughs> to say the least. And I uh, really like Mao Mao. She's awesome. She's a really cool main character. All right, I'm next excited to read the third volume of Knights with a Cat from QDUZ. Um, yeah, it's volume three, and it continues to be just an adorable, kind of goofy, silly, um, like, Four Coma-esque series. Um, if you like cats, you, this is like a must-pick-up. Um, I think it's absolutely adorable and definitely worth a read. All right, up next, we decided, I decided to read the 14th volume of Subasa Yamaguchi's Blue Period. Love this series, um, and this volume was quite a, quite intense, honestly. I think we get a lot of more context about what happened at the end of Volume 13, about this girl who unfortunately passed away, and uh, yeah, we get to learn how like a lot of these guys, or a lot of these people uh, met up and kind of become good friends. Um, it's really sad, um, and I think it has a nice ending to it, though. Um, I really like how the volume ends, and I wish these were coming out faster, but I know that we're almost caught up with the Japanese, so it's probably not going to happen. But really good volume. Blue Period continues to be absolutely amazing. All right, I'm next. I decided to read the first volume of Since I Could Die Tomorrow from Sumako Kari. So yeah, this was an interesting first volume. Um, I didn't know what to expect from it, but basically follows this woman. Uh, she's 42, if I remember correctly. And um, yeah, so she starts to feel like really sick and starts to feel absolutely horrible and she thinks she's going to die. Uh, so she decides to go to the hospital. Uh, and there's nothing really wrong with her, but it comes to, I think she comes to find out that she may have gone through menopause or is going through menopause, which is supposed to be a really difficult time for um, a woman, especially within her 40s and 50s. Um, so it's about her kind of like learning um, like what to do, what she's going to do, continue to do for the rest of her life. Like, uh, is, it worth to, is it worth it to put all of your life into work or to actually like, you know, um, do something for yourself for once in a way so it's about her kind of like thinking about these things and kind of analyzing herself uh kind of getting existential um it's a very existential series so i think i i, I like it a lot especially because i'm starting to get older i'm not not near 40 and I, i'm not a woman so i don't have uh, i'm not a woman i'm not born with a um like female genitalia or uh, like a vagina or something like that so i don't know or will truly understand like the struggles that these characters are going through uh but i do understand that idea of getting older and what do you want to do for the rest of your life like is it really this important to put this much focus into work uh versus um many other things um being able to enjoy yourself basically be in the moment so uh, I do like it and I do appreciate it for that. I think it's really an interesting read. Um, and if you're feeling like you want to be a little existential and think about yourself and think about life, uh, definitely give this a shot. Coming up next, I read volume 19 of Boruto Naruto Next Generation from Masashi Kishimoto and Mikio Ikimoto. And um, yeah, uh, I'm starting to not like this series as much, uh, to be fair. Um, I think it's just getting like, it's getting like too... Uh, it's getting like too silly. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it doesn't feel like the stakes are fair. Um, like, it feels like there's something up. And it's kind of, I mean, they did leave us on an interesting, um, how do I call it? Cliffhanger for this volume. But I just like, I don't know. I don't really like Boruto. I don't really like a lot of the characters, to be fair. I don't really like how there's like, they're just kind of making stuff up. Um, now, uh, like, when Naruto is kind of there already and like that whole... 72 volume story is already there and they're kind of just like adding stuff to the story and I don't know how I feel about that so um yeah it's fine um I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen um especially with what happens at the end of this volume but this beginning to middle of this volume just like just, it's not great all right up next I decided to read the interesting series Full Moon O Sagashite this is volumes three through five from Arya Tanamura um, yeah, um, I only have two more volumes until I'm finished, and uh, this series is quite fascinating. So many people are kissing each other, and they really should not be kissing each other. <laughs> um, but this is a classic shoujo series from Arina Tanamura. It follows a story about this girl who has like throat cancer, but uh, she wants to be able to sing, so she refuses to get this surgery that could potentially save her life. Um, so uh, she's basically visited by Shikigami and they give her the ability to sing her heart away by giving her like this new body that allows her to become a singer uh, even though she does transfer after a couple hours. So 
I don't know. It tackles a lot of interesting themes, especially about like death and all that kind of stuff. So if you want another existential series with a lot of drama and a lot of chaos, uh, definitely give this one a shot. It's quite interesting. I love how I keep bouncing back between like intense stories and like kind of existential, very interesting, very thought provoking stories and then just like totally wacky stories. But I read the fourth volume of The Way of the House Husband from Kosuke Ono. Uh, it's been a long time since I've read this series. Um, this is in my fiance's collection, not in mine. Um, but yeah, it's just really silly. It's really dumb. Um, but I kind of absolutely love it, and I love just like how ridiculous it gets. It's really funny. It gets me cl I cackling every time. Uh, every chapter will make you laugh. So yeah, I just really enjoyed it, and I thought it was a good volume, and I will be reading more. And the last volume of March 2024 is the big hulking monster. Absolutely wonderful read. I totally get it now. I get it guys. I understand what everyone's been talking about. I read The Heart of Thomas from Moto Hagio. Wow, this was this was crazy. Um, this tells the absolutely interesting and very intense story following the story of um, not Thomas, funny enough. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on the main character's name. Um, Oh, well, I don't remember the main character's name, but basically the main character is like this, like, um, oh, Julie, uh, his name is Julie, uh, because he's named after July, that's what he is. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Julie goes to this boarding school, and this, uh, kid named Thomas, who is a person that is below him in, uh, in grade, uh, tells him that he's in love with him, and Julie basically, uh, outright rejects him in person, um, eventually, which leads to Thomas's demise, which, it's this word, um, and now it's about the repercussions and kind of like people living on beyond that. Um, person comes to the boarding school who looks just like Thomas and is starting to affect Julie's brain and Julie's mind. Um, and man, it tackles so many interesting themes of like belonging and um, understanding what love and grief is and understanding to accept love even if you feel um, like you don't deserve it. And it's just, oh, it's really intense and it's... Uh, it's a very long read, so this will, this will take you a while, uh, but I think it's wholly worthwhile. I think it's just an absolutely beautifully curated story, um, and it's done so well across the board. The art's absolutely gorgeous, some beautiful panels, um, and just some really awesome like chapter pages, I guess, or chapter covers. Um, so great stuff. We get some color pages as well, or like at least some partially colored pages, which is awesome. Lovely! It was absolutely wonderful, and um, it might be in my top 20 for the end of the year, but definitely worth reading. Uh, get your hands on it if you can. And that is going to be the end of this reading log. Uh, yeah, uh, this one was pretty intense. I read a lot, or I didn't really read a lot, but I read a lot of different kind of series, so there's a lot to talk about. But uh, thank you for watching. I always appreciate it. Thank you to Reg, uh, Regs C. Lee for being a good old-fashioned member. You can become a member too, and you can get these videos early if you want. You can also like comment, and subscribe. Those are all amazing things. I really appreciate it when you do that. Uh, it means the most, um, and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much for all of your support. Um, and anyway, I don't really care how you support, but I really appreciate it that you do. Um, so thank you for watching, and if you didn't do any of those things, thank you for getting to the end of this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.